What's good, YouTube? It's me, your boy Squiddy, back again with another video. I wanted to start like a weekly sort of market watch video where we kind of look at not the cards that are going up in price currently, but the cards that might have potential to go up, might be playable in the metagame, things that you guys should probably pick up if you have an opportunity, if you're visiting locals or like a big event and you have access to trades or just like what the vendors have. Let's dive in with the first card and that's Phantasme. So I covered this in my previous video where Phantasme is sort of a hand trap that isn't long forgotten about. Like Link Monsters haven't been as dominant in the game since they've released new stuff like Castera, Purely, they're more XYZ based. However, if the ban list is any indication of the fact that Castera might go away, then we're only gonna be left with a couple decks in the left, uh, one of which is Super Heavy Samurai and then potentially Math Mech as some of the Closer to tier one decks, I would say for sure. At least Samurai will probably be the best deck. And they happen to link into the Super Heavy Samurai um, Scarecrow during their combo at all times. So Phantasma is always going to be live when you see it in your opening hand, more or less. And a lot of times on their follow-up, they're still going to link off into that uh, Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow anyway, just for the recursion play. So being able to draw two to number one, fix your hand, because in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's really hard to mulligan. Like, there are not a lot of cards that get rid of bricks, and bricks are prevalent in a lot of decks. You also can fix your hand traps, like you can draw into more hand traps and put back multiples of a hand trap that you already have, for example, Ash Blossom, and tailor your deck. It's also really nice that it has the effect, the added bonus to negate a uh, card effect that targets so something like a baron you can bait out that negate with your phantasma so you kind of get value for it while exchanging cards in your hand for better ones so i think you could definitely see some play against decks like math you can draw like up to three cards sometimes and maybe even four if they have like some kind of power play with four link monsters on the field so being able to draw cards is always very, very good. In the grind game, this card is also very good as well. Putting a 2400 onto the board that you can crash with things like Fenrir. And then also, if your deck happens to play Link Monsters, this is also very, very good because, you know, you just have like more ways to link off uh, something like a dark being a dark type or a dragon is also searchable off of Magnemut, which is something else that we should mention because you could also search this off of Magnemut so you have something for a grind game a follow-up it's also very good against rogue things like sky striker so i think this card could potentially see some play in the upcoming format after the list comes out and i think you guys should definitely pick it up and speaking of hand traps like guys we should pick up hand traps that are not seeing play in the format so things like ghost reaper and winter cherries as well if you guys look at this history of Yu-Gi-Oh, there are always hand traps, uh, like four or five hand traps that are decently playable, and then that becomes like two or three that are very good in the format, in a given format. And then other hand traps are just forgotten about, but they go down in price to like a dollar, maybe 25 cents. But then as soon as they're played again, then they shoot up in price again. Like we've seen things like Drone Lock where they were like 10 cents each. Now they're like four or five bucks for any given coffee because they're so prevalent in the metagame. Same with Ghost Ogre and um, some other cards. Like Ghost Ogre is already like four or five bucks as well. So... Knowing when to capitalize when these cards are cheap is a bonus investment because they're always going to go up in price and then you can flip them for more. I think Ghost Reaper, the ultimate ones are like $25, $30, which is absolutely bottom floor of price. The minute that this sees play in a future tier zero format where it's actually good and sided by every deck, it's going to go up to like 70, 80 bucks for the ultimate rare alone. So just try to stock up on cards like this. Also, DD Crow is only like, it's under a dollar right now for any copy. This card, when it was seeing play, it was four or five dollars again because it was very scarce on the market. Everyone wants to pick up this card. So I think DD Crow actually has some good interactions in the current format. You can hit the target off of Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow, so you get rid of the Soul Piercer, which is very good. It's also decent against Purely Lily. You get rid of the target when they try and go in the XYZ by targeting a quick play spell in their grave. And it just has a lot of applications against other decks like Branded, against Math Mech. It's a one-for-one -one trade. It's not the best card, but it sees a lot of play, and I think it could have some future value against other decks that might come out in the next pack as well. So this is a good time to pick this up. Here's some cards that I want to talk about in forms of traps. Unending Nightmare, uh, let's talk about some like trap pseudo floodgate, so to speak, or cards that interact. Uh, this is a card that's only a couple of bucks. For the original printing, the secret rare is like two bucks. I think this could potentially see some side deck play. Um, it might not be as good as something like Cosmic Cyclone, but the minute that this sees play by a prevalent player in like a big event, it's going to shoot up in price. I think it's decent in the format because it hits a lot of things. A lot of the current decks actually play continuous spells, field spells, or Wakaushi being a pendulum that you can all snipe with Unending Nightmare. And against decks like Purely, you can hit my friend Purely. Um, 
against the uh, Kashira, you can hit the field spell as well as birth. So it just has added benefits. Like against Branded even, you can hit Lost. It's always going to be live in some capacity. You're being able to hit uh, continuous spells and traps that are on the table. So this could be a decent card going first. And it effectively shuts down your opponent by playing any continuous or traps uh, continuous field spells so on and so forth like any extenders and all it takes is a thousand life points it's not once per turn so i think this is something that you guys could definitely pick up it could potentially go up in price and then you guys flip it for a couple of bucks you know you, you come out on top same with things like mistake this is another card that's decently good i think cards like deck lockdown might be a little better because it has a marginal added benefit of being able to lock down your opponent from special summoning from the deck However, Mistake is on the table forever. It's a continuous trap card, so it might work well in a Floodgate deck like Labyrinth. This card is very, very cheap for the original printing. It's like two bucks. But the minute that this card sees play, it doesn't have a lot of printings. I'm pretty sure it only has like one or two printings. So when this goes up, uh, it definitely goes up very high. So you guys can scoop this up and then, you know, flip it when it goes high. And then Mistake and Arrest is another one that has trickled up like the secret rares are only five bucks right now but originally it went up to like 30 bucks i think at one point when it was actually sided so this is another card that's like a pseudo blanket card blanket cards are very very powerful in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. things like drone lockbird dimensional barrier so on anything that says your opponent can't play for or use a certain effect for one turn i think can always be playable and if mistaken arrest is actually playable again and sided in a big event it's going to shoot up in price again we're going to rinse and repeat like history is going to repeat so it's going to go up so if you guys have the um opportunity to pick this up for cheap might as well do it now and then last but not least i'm going to kind of talk about the dinosaur cards so sorry eating rover after and his buddies i think this deck is getting a lot of new support in the upcoming set the side set with the new dinosaurs that destroy stuff they're getting like a searcher card that also pops in a baby in the hand on resolution so this deck is probably going to see a lot of play in the tcg because they love dinosaurs and we don't have maxi right it's not like the ocg where they kind of fold to maxi in the tcg there's no maxi so you're not really folding to drill i think the deck has a lot of ways to play through drill you're still putting up an oppressive board and if the ban list is very kind to us, they might see Miscellaneousaurus go up to two or three because they know Konami knows that we're getting new Dino support, so they want to kind of push the deck a little bit. So they might bring Miscellaneousaurus to two or three. So these cards are some good time to pick up these cards right now is because over after is like a dollar or two for like any printing. And it went, I remember when dinosaurs were actually playable, this card went up to like $15 at the time, even being a structure deck, like super rare. Uh, it was just that crazy. So over after, I think is a good pickup. Miscellaneous source gold are under a dollar and another good pickup. And then Animador and Arkansas, the secret rares are a little higher at 15 bucks each. But then there's the uh, reprinting the ultra rare in the Battles of Legend Brotherhood, which is like uh under a dollar it's like a dollar or two so this might be a good time to kind of bling out your dinosaur pick up the high rarity stuff and hang on to it until it comes up and then if the ban list actually releases miscellaneous source and we're going to see these cards just shoot up in price and then potentially like the other dinosaur cards that you guys can think of that have higher rarities will also go up in price with that and even if miscellaneous source stays on the ban list then with the new side set when the dinosaur stuff is kind of hyped then this stuff might start going up and same with the doodle beast as well we can't forget that the doodle beast uh the doodle beast tyranno might be another card that's very good in the deck as well so this could be something that you guys pick up they're all very cheap a couple of dollars each so if you guys are looking to make like a side sort of penny stock investment then these cards are definitely great to pick up anyways that's about all i had for the video if you guys like that subscribe comment and let me know if there are any cards that we missed that cards that might be like secret hidden text that other players are talking about things that we haven't really discussed that might go up in value as well to pick up and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye